So the very last thing here, though, um, I do want to tie this together with explaining how um, that twin paradox, which, again, the idea was that both observers should predict the other one to be younger. Um, so the twin paradox turns out to be entirely explained by GR. Uh, by the way, what, one of the weird things, general relativity is um, typically written just as GR and pronounced GR. Sometimes we'll abbreviate special relativity as SR, but you never call it SR. It's always special relativity and GR. I don't know why. Um, okay, so again, here's the idea. We have Earth, person B, person A, and some velocity near the speed of light. So let's just sketch through this and let's let's kind of see if we can catch where the mistake happens. Now we begin, both people, so both people are here are here on Earth. So we have person B and person A. Person A gets mad, hoists person B up into a jet. And so that jet or whatever, the, the, the rocket ship or whatever, now clearly you need to begin at rest, or at least the person needs to begin at rest. You can jump in a moving jet, but you're going to be accelerated to get up to speed. So person B accelerates, accelerates up to speed, which again, it might be 0.999% the speed of light or whatever. So they're accelerating to an extremely high amount. Now, so they're going to have, you know, for, for a certain amount of time. Now what's going to happen is they're going to move forward through the universe for what to this guy might seem like 40 years. So let, let's say maybe for the, for the first 10 years they're, they're coming up to speed. So it takes them 10 years to get to speed. Now, for the next, let's say, 20 years, 25 years, they're going to be going this way here. Eventually, they're going to need to turn around. So what they do is, you know, they say, hey, let's, we see a, you know, a, a mile marker, uh, you know, 40 light years over there. Let's, let's just kind of gradually slow down and let's swing around and let's come back this other way. Turns out, if they're already going 0.99c, it's going to take a substantial amount of time to slow down and an equal amount of time to get back up to speed going this way. So now they're going to have, for example, um, by the way, this was 10 years of speeding up, 25 years of coasting. Let's say another 10 years slowing down. And speeding up again. So doing the math, we're at 10, now we're at 35, now we're at 45. Let's say now they spend another 25 years coasting. We're at 70. And what's that last 10 years spent doing? Decelerating until there. So do you see what the issue is? The person who's standing on Earth. Now, by the way, Earth has a fairly weak gravitational field, but it's true that if you took person B and just moved them out into space and they didn't and they never moved, that A's clock would be very slightly slowed down due to Earth's gravitational time dilation. Now, it turns out that is a minuscule enough factor we can completely ignore that effect. If we were on, for example, a neutron star, that's totally not true. But ignore any uh, gravitational time dilation from person A. From his point of view, other than that gravitational field that he's feeling, he's, he would say he is in a perfectly inertial reference frame because he would be able to tell whether there's an acceleration causing him to go that way or that way because we feel those accelerations as a force. And he knows that uh, except for that gravitational force, there is nothing changing his, uh, his frame of reference from being in, uh, inertial to non-inertial. Compare that to person B here what they're going to feel for the first 10 years of their motion, even though they're off Earth. Now, you have to imagine, like, if the rocket ship is like that, if they're accelerating forwards, they're going to have to stand up like this. There is going to be a perceived gravitational field for 10 entire years. 
Now, and, and again, I mean, that might be an exaggeration, but if you're accelerating up to an extremely high fraction of speed of light, that would be required. So they're going to have 10 years where they're experiencing maybe something like 100 Gs or something like that. Then they're going to coast for a while. This is when they would be accurate in saying this person's clock during that time period would run more slowly. But it's only during this 25-year segment and then that next 25-year segment of coasting where this person is truly inertial. The remainder of it, that first 10 years, that middle period slowing down, speeding up, and the last period slowing down again, all four of those situations will be perceived to them to be no different than a gravitational field acting on them. So, based on the, the, the uh, equivalence principle and the idea that there is such a thing as gra uh, gravitational time dilation, this person here will not be, they won't be necessarily aging differently during this part. They won't be aging differently during this part. They will fundamentally be aging differently during the beginning, during this entire middle segment, and during the end. And in order to get them the speeds to make this relevant, the perceived gravitational field will be much more substantial than Earth's, and therefore it will cause a much more significant time dilation effect than anything that Earth ever would. So isn't that kind of cool, though? Turns out that by looking at this from non-inertial reference frames and using the, the equivalence principle, this guy effectively is gravitationally slowed down his life. Not according to the laws of special relativity, but according to the laws of general relativity. So I think it's a really kind of cool resolution of this. There, this person is in a fundamentally different situation than that, and that's why he will always age more than... Okay. So that's the end. That's all I have to say about that thing.